Hello, I'm Terry David Mulligan, and this is Mulligan Stew, the podcast, music, film, food, and wine. Music will be included. Film will be included. I'll explain. Actually, I think Kevin Hearn, my guest, actually talks about food and wine. But really, this is about his new album called Common Sense. C-A-L-M-A-N-D-C-E-N-T-S. Common Sense. His version of Common Sense. It's his latest solo album away from the spotlight of Bare Naked Ladies. But Kevin's, Kevin's different. Kevin has survived cancer a number of times. He helped to prepare and produce the performances for Gord Downey's solo album as he passed on. It was called Secret Path. And for Gord, it was a big deal that Kevin had been down this same road, that he had fought cancer and had to deal with it. He did the same thing with Lou Reed for six years. But he asked Kevin to lead his band. I'll tell you about this new album, Common Sense, in just a moment. Actually, Kevin will. But let me read you a a quote from an article by Ben Kaplan, July the 4th, 2019, in the Sharp magazine. The headline said, Kevin Hearn of the Bare Naked Ladies may be the most important person in Canadian music right now. Kevin would debate that. Over the last three decades, he has worked with some of the best musicians on the planet, including Neil Young, Tanya Tagak, Elvis Costello, Tom Jones, and for his final six years, Lou Reed. And he's done it all without calling any attention to himself, despite the fact he might be the most melodic, generous person in Canadian music right now. In June, he released an instrumental record called Common Sense. As Kevin says, life is a beautiful puzzle, then you fall to pieces. I'm happy I'm still alive. There must be a reason. I hope I can make the world a better place through my work. This spring in support of uh, Music Counts, Kevin launched an exclusive EP, 500 Vinyl Discs. It was called Kevin Hearn and Friends Present the Superhero Suite. Violent Femmes, Bare Naked Ladies, Colin Hay, Carol Pope, Alan Doyle, Ron Sexsmith, The Persuasions, Harlan Williams, his cousin, I think he said, Sean Cullen from Corky and the Juice Pigs, The Rio Statics, Mary Margaret O'Hara, and many others. But we've come to talk about Common Sense, the latest album. There are three videos released for Common Sense. Uh, the songs are Ghost Birds, The Silent Collapse, and The Chemical Valley. Very striking videos, beautifully made. You can find all three if you go to mulliganstew.ca, our homepage. Just click on the Mulligan Stew podcast, and you'll see those three videos. Please enjoy this conversation with a wonderful man, Kevin Hearn. What did you do with your time off, Kevin, in between Bare Naked Lady uh, tours that went on forever and ever? Um, I turned 50. Okay. Well, that hey, that's a big deal. Hey, <laughs> just turning yeah. turning 50 is a big deal, but it's more important than that, isn't it? Uh, sure. It's just nice to be alive. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I didn't do anything huge. I, I had a nice dinner. I reserved a table for 10 at my favorite restaurant in Toronto, which is called Dandelion. And uh, the chef, Jay, he just... He said, I'm going to cook for you all. Oh, man. And it was beautiful. He knocked it out of the park. When when a chef says to you, I'm going to do the cooking, you just don't fight it. Just go with the flow. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. All right. We have but a moment, uh, and then you're back on the road uh, with the ladies. Um, uh, it's... it's there's some irony in the fact that the uh, name of your new album is Calm and Sense, C-A-L-M and C-E-N-T-S. Uh, you you are a, dev- as I said to Meg, I'm going to talk to Kevin Hearn. She said, you mean the Bare Naked Ladies Kevin Hearn? I said, no, the other Kevin Hearn. The <laughs> other one. You. And she said, there's two of them? I said, yes, there's two of them. And this is the second one. Uh, I love you. That's <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> How did common sense come about? Is it a, is it a natural progression from way back when to now with this solo work? Yeah, I suppose I I was exploring um, the piano more on this on this venture. I uh, just to 
to get personal, I know you you know this, but I have a history with cancer, mm-hmm. and uh, I had a little resurgence, and I needed treatment on my tongue, so I I wasn't able to sing or speak for quite a while, and I decided to make some music while I was uh, recovering, and I would let the piano be my voice, and so I went through all my ideas that had uh, strong melodies and got together with Hugh Marsh and Chris Gartner, and we came up to my cabin up in the north and um, and recorded uh, this record. Was it therapy? Yes, uh, but it was also uh, camaraderie and creative uh, fun, really. I mean, we, we do talk about, and I know that you raise funds for the music therapy. Um, as as a as a means of hmm, gaining expression. gaining straight strength expression uh a means of communication uh and sometimes sometimes i get caught in the trap of thinking that communication has to be a hit and it's not a hit it's the it's the music that carries the day and this is um this is music that um uh it will you this is not casual music this is music that will cause you to think about if you don't see the visuals what it is you're trying to say to us what are you trying to say kevin uh i'm trying to just paint a picture and deliver a mood i suppose there's a haunting quality and a melancholic quality is that the right word melancholic yeah well it's a good one okay <laughs> and i suppose some of it's inspired by by nature and sort of um, what we're all thinking about these days, climate change. Mm-hmm. And so there's, a, there's both a wonder of nature and then sort of a sadness as well, um, you know, reflected in some of the songs, um, like The Silent Collapse, which is about extinction, you know. But I don't really get up and lyrically preach i just sort of express how i feel about it in in the music there's a track mostly instrumental the, of course uh there's a track there called the nemophilist and oh yes and, <laughs> and uh, that's one who's fond of forests is a haunter of woods and i'm surrounded by a rainforest so i can definitely uh identify with that tell me about that track uh i love that track it's sort of a haunting uh, melody sounds like something you might hear in a suspense or a horror film at first. Sure, but then uh, the bass line comes in and the drums, and you're. I picture myself in the woods, and then it sort of gets happy in the middle, and that's when I sort of feel like when you're when you get that feeling when you're in the forest and it's magical and you connect with it and it's absolute absolutely a joyful experience. But and what, spiritual, perhaps. What is it the Japanese say that when you go for a walk in the woods, you, you do forest bathing? Oh, yeah. Yes, I've heard of that. Isn't that great? It's fantastic. <laughs> and they, I, they actually prescribe it for people to do, I, I think. Well, the combination of forest bathing and music, to me, is, is just everything. That's all. Uh, and I, I believe in the power of healing uh, uh, that comes from music. Well, then this record's for you, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I heard it, too, Kevin. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you. 
um, you put out uh, three videos, and it makes sense that you would do that simply because this is such a visual music that you, that you're making. Do you did you see the visuals as you were playing the music and creating it? Uh, for most of it, yes. And I'm I'm in the process of making visuals for all of it because when I eventually perform it, I, I want that to be a oh yeah an important uh, component component. Well, it does beg the question, Kevin. When can you perform this? <laughs> it, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm hoping maybe a few shows before the end of the year, but certainly sometime next year. Uh, Hugh and I and Chris are discussing it now. Um, I mean, how long are the ladies on the road? Because this is prime time right now. This is this is the when when it, hay is made uh, is harvested uh, when is the last date uh, that you can count on for the bare naked ladies uh it's just um mid september i believe oh cool all right yeah very well um now uh let me let's just talk about uh, chemical valley which is okay. the which is the most powerful statement uh that can be made it's about the soiling the poisoning uh, of our earth, but in a very specific spot, and I'll let you explain. Sure. I was at a, a protest rally at City Hall in Toronto, and an activist named Vanessa Gray got up, and she started her speech by saying, I come from the Chemical Valley. I have chemicals in my hair and chemicals in my blood from the chemicals in the air. And... You know, I said that is a song, and I, I've got to meet this person. And I, I got together with her and asked a whole bunch of questions, and with her blessing, wrote the rest of the song. It's about it's about Sarnia, 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 Ontario. Yeah. Um, what ha- What happened, Kevin? What happened in Sarnia? Yeah. Well, I believe the. The land was developed into sort of an industrial area, and from Vanessa's point of view, people were um, persuaded to to agree to it based on the fact that there would be, you know, jobs forever and shared wealth, and people would be the welfare of people would be considered. But that isn't really what happened, and um, the World Health Organization says it's. Uh, the most polluted place in Canada, and people have died, and people, you know, don't have clean resources, and it, it, it just goes on and on. And you made a dedication on the track. Yes, I dedicated it to the, the to the indigenous people of that region. I can't imagine what they think of what's happened to their their land. Yeah, well, that's uh, those are the kind of conversations that obviously we need to have more and more, and it's happening more and more all over the country, right? My goodness. Yeah. Can... Well, uh, we like to think that we don't have places like that in this country. I mean, that's a, a common given, a common thought, that we are we are not the you know other places in the world that have been spo- the, that where the land has been raped and pillaged but we can't you know we, we've got to stop pointing at other people and take a look at ourselves I, I, I'm hoping that this this music and this thought will help I hope so too I come from the chemical valley the chemicals in my hair Chemicals in my blood the Chemicals in the air In the valley, the valley, in the valley The valley, the valley, in the valley Chemical Valley
You say we should leave the valley But they would tell me there They tell me and I'm blind They tell me and I'm blind They took away the names With another broken promise Now things have got to change In the valley, in the valley, in the valley It's still you against a, you know, big industry there, Kev. Uh, yeah, well, we all have to speak out when we feel something's uh, something wrong has been done, right? And um, I'd like to point out too, the video was directed by Jennifer Beckwall and Nick Deponcier, um, who have made all those great films, uh, Watermark and mm -hmm. Anthropocene, I think. So. It's nice to have their, their involvement and their touch on it. He's Kevin Hearn. I'm Terry David Mulligan. This is Mulligan Stew, the podcast. Uh, he has a new album out. He, this Kevin Hearn, this particular Kevin Hearn. Um, uh, it's called Common Sense, C-A-L-M and C-E-N-T-S, Common Sense. Um, and there's three tracks we want to play for you, um, specifically because... There's videos to go with them, and it's such a visual piece of music. Uh, and I will, uh, Kevin, we should tell uh, uh, 
friends and fans of yours uh, from Bare Naked Ladies and other work uh, that this is not Bare Naked Ladies work. This is you very singularly uh, making your music and um, and and so to not be uh, disappointed when you when you don't hear that pop hook come in. Uh, for example, the silent collapse. This is uh, is is this your animation? Well, it's based on characters that I drew, but it's animated by an artist named Sonia Beckwith Cole. Wow, isn't that nice? That's nice. Yeah, it was actually her idea, the concept of the video. She said, "I'd like to use your drawings, and I'd like to." Uh, the whole you'll see if you watch the video. Her st- her storyline was just beautiful. You're talking about uh, the silent collapse, the collapse of the world. Uh, well, I was inspired to write the song when I saw a photo I took. Uh, I went on a trip to Africa about ten years ago, and I took a photo of a a rhino, and it was one of the last wild rhinos at the time. And um, since that that species of rhino has gone extinct. And uh, so that that is sort of reflected in the video. Yeah. There's a creature that this, this the main character has a dream and goes swimming in the ocean with this animal. <laughs> does this get to you as much as it does the rest of us? Uh, what do you mean? Well, uh, the uh, first of all, the the deniers that uh, this is happening in the world. Oh uh, God! It bothers me every day. You yeah. know, um, it makes me so sad, especially when I see young people and and see what what they're inheriting. It's just and plastic. And I know if we all put our energy and minds to to creating a better world in a better way to look after this world, that we could do it. Kev, the problem, what really bothers me is there's a clock ticking. We can see it. We've been told. We've been told there's just years, a tilting point where there's no return. And, and, and how can we stupidly stumble to this point and say, well, we, we didn't really know or, or over to you for another generation? Um, I, I believe that the pushback will come from that younger uh, demographic who are going to inherit what we've screwed up.
I'm Terry David Mulligan. He's Kevin Hearn uh, of Bare Naked Ladies. Uh, but this is Kevin Hearn, the solo artist. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, the other track I wanted to uh, talk about was Ghost Birds, um, which, is a <laughs> which is a collection of home movies. Although I do believe, uh, if you watch very carefully, I'm, I'm sure that there's black and white in there that's been shot with a herky-jerky motion and a kind of a, 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 a home movie uh, uh, a sense that's been ingrained in there, or is it all home movies? Uh, it's all home movies from the, the 50s and early 60s. I'm looking at the car thinking, that's the first thing guys think about. Well, that's a car, that's a Studebaker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was my grandfather. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, tell us about the story behind Ghost Birds. Uh, well, that footage is footage that my uncle Neil uh, inherited from his father, which is my grandfather, and he put it all together on a VHS and sent a copy to all of us. Mm. And I saw it, and for a long time I thought, oh, I've got to set this to music. Um, it's so moody and so haunting. And when we were making this record, I had, I had this idea, uh, which was the Ghost Bird song, and eventually it sort of, I made the connection, like, this is the music for that, that video. Who's playing the piano and the little ukulele? Oh, that's, uh, well, do you know my cousin is Harlan Williams? Do you I, know the comedian? Of course, but um, I thought Ron Sexsmith said that, that was his brother or something. No, never mind. He was, he was pulling your leg. Yes, he was. Yes, so Harlan is my cousin, and... His mother and my mother are sisters. So in that video, that's Harlan's mother playing the piano, wow. Lorraine. And that's uh, Harlan's dad, uh, my Uncle John, um, playing the ukulele, which now hangs in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, and what was it, what about that footage caused the music to flow from, for Ghost Birds? Uh sort of the passage of time, the thought of uh, more innocent times, a reflection on mortality, um, and how, you know, once once we're gone, we're gone. And once an animal is gone, it's gone. Hey, Kev, this is heavy shit you're talking about. <laughs> well, it is mulligans too, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was told it was a heavy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, how to recreate this? I know you can do it in the studio. On stage, would you need strings? Uh, well, Hugh Marsh provides a lot sure. of, the, of that texture. Um, I'd need Chris for the bass. I'd need a drummer. I, I might hire another keyboardist to cover some of those extra strings and, and keyboard parts. There are a dime but, a dozen, those guys. <laughs> Anybody, you know, come on. <laughs> well, you know, Terry, you said this is heavy stuff, and it's like <laughs> that's that's how I work through things with music, yeah. you know. So it's a beautiful way to do it. Um, while I'm at it, and while I have you on the phone, let me see yeah. here. I made some notes to myself. Um, tell me about Kevin Hearn and Friends presents the superhero suite. Oh, sure. Well, to, to balance off the heavy stuff, I decided I'd like to do something just for fun, and that was kind of lighthearted. Uh, one of the first pieces I ever learned uh, on piano was the Incredible Hulk theme, and when I played with my solo band, Finbuckle, sometimes I would break into the Incredible Hulk, and our drummer, Bob Scott, would start doing a drum solo and sort of transform into the Hulk. <laughs> and people liked that part of the show, so we started adding to it. We added Batman and Spider-Man and Iron Man, and eventually it was like, we got to record this. So we recorded it, and then I thought, I'm going to take each section and make it special and have a different artist either feature on it or totally recreate it. So I've, I have the Persuasions doing Heroes and Villains, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Violent Femmes and Bare Naked Ladies and Colin Hay doing Batman, Carol Pope singing Iron Man with Alan Doyle, uh, on and on it goes. You got, so. you got Sexsmith in there? Yeah, Sexsmith doing Spider-Man, 
the Rheostatics doing Waiting for a Superman. Alan I've Doyle. I've got members of the Sun Ra Orchestra playing horns. <laughs> um, it's just a bizarre 16-minute fun trip. And I, I um, donated all proceeds to Music Counts, which is Canada's music charity. Was, did this stem from Record Store Day? Well, my idea was to do it and release it as a limited release on Record Store Day. Uh, so I called into Counts once it was done and said, I'd like to play you something. And I went into their office and played it for them. And they looked kind of perplexed, although they loved it. And they said, what do you want to do with this? I said, well, <laughs> my my dream was to release it on Record Store Day as a limited edition with all proceeds going to Music Counts. But I don't know how to make that happen. And they said, well, we have a direct relationship with Record Store Day. And then we had another meeting a few days later with Ryan, who runs Record Store Day Canada, and he loved it, and we were off to the races. Hmm. Isn't that nice? It's fantastic, and it, and it's getting airplay. It is? Yes. Where, on Mulligan Stew? Yeah, and CKUA, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, that's great. I know. I hope people love it because it's so fun. You know, it's just a weird thing. I was inspired by Hal Wilner's records. Do you remember those? Um, Lost in the Stars. Yes, that's right. That's I was trying yeah. to think of the title. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, listen, uh, did uh, are you? <laughs> I have your uh, uh, solo uh, albums on vinyl. Um, I hear they're being re-released. Uh, yes, not on vinyl yet, but they're on all digital platforms all together. All and, and why all at once? Well, you know, Jeff Kulowick's company, he wanted to put out this Common Sense record. He says, why don't we get all your back catalog and put them all together in one place and make sure they're all available everywhere. Wow. So that sounded appealing to me. That's a, that's a friend. Sure, yeah. He was a, a champion of the Look People back in the day, which was the first professional band I was in. Oh, you, you remember back. them? Yeah, I, I do remember them. I thought you hung up on me. No, maybe. I was. I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking in terms of a video. Was there a video for them? For Look People? Yeah. Well, we had video for Lovely Samba Chicken. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> looking for a job that doesn't suck. Okay. <laughs> you asked. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Here's the thing. You have a balance here. You you are asked to be a bare naked lady and go out and do that whole um, rock and roll music circus, and it really does get like that. And then you have you, the other guy, doing common sense and and cre finding a, a you know. A, it's like a floor that's covered in stuff and you're just moving stuff away and getting your own space and here you are and when you finally get there the music flows it's quite remarkable uh, what you've been able to accomplish thank you very much terry now here's the thing ha you know how we all we're all jumping up we really were we're congratulating you for the songs that you brought to bare naked ladies uh, uh how they've increased over the last three or four albums and how you carried the day on the last one and i'm wondering if doing this music in some small way even though there you can't see the correlation helped in the shaping of you as a as a, as a singer songwriter and and a song presenter for bare naked ladies uh, well, certainly this this record is so uh, consistently one sort of vibe or mood yep. that anything that sort of worked for this went to this. And songs that I might be working on that had lyrics or um, more of a pop rock sort of vibe were, were offered to the Bare Naked Ladies. Mm-hmm. And they gladly took them. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to play Common Sense uh, or um, no. know, Grimsby. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, no, they're not, not going to do Grimsby. No. <laughs> no, they're, no, they're not. So um, that, I give that to the other Kevin, and he does it, you know. So really, are there really two Kevins? Really? <laughs> well, sort of. I mean, they, they work together. You know, all the work I do with Bare Naked Ladies is precious to me and i i really feel proud of what we do we make people laugh and have a fun time and that's really great but then there's the other kevin who needs to do this kind of music and uh 
we we keep each other happy, you know. I'd like to hear some of the conversations between the two Kevins. It must be really interesting. Well, our rates are quite reasonable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, I can't wait to see uh, what this looks like on stage and hear it uh, and see it in its full, uh, because with the with the visuals in behind you, it gets really powerful. Thank you. Well, and, and I, hope, I hope we make it out there. Uh, are you going to do all the tracks? Yes. Wow. Nice commitment. Way to go. Thank you, Terry.
the words and the deeds of Kevin Hearn of Bare Naked Ladies, but he has released yet another fresh, wonderful solo album called Common Sense. We played you Ghost Birds, Silent Collapse, The Chemical Valley, about Sarnia, Ontario, and The Nomophilist, one who is fond of forests, a haunter of woods. And if you go to mulliganstew.ca, you'll find the Mulligan Stew podcast. And on that podcast, uh, the visual will include videos of Ghost Birds, The Silent Collapse, The Chemical Valley, and anything else he might have made, because he's planning on doing all of the tracks. I just don't know if they're finished yet. He's an amazing guy. You know that. Amazing. Kevin Hearn from Bare Naked Ladies. Thank you for listening. This has been Mulligan Stew, the podcast. Please subscribe on Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify.